Hey guys, so generally when a country stops existing, its country code top level domain stops existing as well. So we have got some examples of this, like DD, which used to be the code for East Germany, YD for South Yemen, CS, Serbia Montenegro, YU, Yugoslavia, there's many examples. But there's one which continues to exist, but shouldn't exist, and that is the domain .su. So for those unfamiliar with the terminology, let's just quickly go into it. So that when I talk about a domain, I'm referring to the top level domain. So for example, like .com, .uk, .de, .org, that kind of thing. Every country pretty much has one, including in this example, the Soviet Union. Now the usual process is when a country stops existing, its domain is automatically wound up and deregistered, as has happened before. But this didn't happen for .su. Now I had a look through to try and figure out why this was and what I found was that until 1994 Russia didn't have its own top level domain so the SU domain was left in place just so that Russian internet users have a top level domain and the intention was it would be replaced by .ru eventually and that happened in 1994 but as of 2022 the .su domain continues to exist. It's still registered by the Russian Institute for Public Networks. The, it's still administered by the same registry that operates the Russian country code domain .ru as well as the Cyrillic uh, domain for Russia .rf. So this usage of it, this fact that it stays online is very unusual and it is in itself notable. But it actually gets even more interesting. Currently it has uh, 119,423 sites registered on it. Well, it's used by some legitimate usage, so I have a look through and I tried to find a few legitimate usage. I found one fan site for a band called Snap. I found just a, key, a few kind of random personal websites. I also found like a few political usage um, of it. Some people who want to resurrect the Soviet Union were using it. A few kind of Russian nationalists were using it. Uh, a few people who kind of tried to latch on to the anti-fascist image of the Soviet Union. Among these political websites, I found the Stalin.su, a website that just seems to glorify Stalin. Quite a fitting domain for the former Soviet dictator. There is some use of it in Japan, because an awful lot of Japanese words end with the letters SU. There's a lot of political use, particularly with what's going on over in Russia and Ukraine at the moment. But an awful lot of the usage is cyber criminals and cyber crime. This domain now has absolute notoriety because it's not got anyone really regulating it. It's had huge amounts of people registering domains just for the purpose of cyber crime activity and just kind of dodgy online hacker purposes. Also it's had a huge amount of people registering domains who can't get domains registered anywhere. The common theme here seems to be is that people are registering these domains just because they can't register them anywhere else or they kind of fear regulation if they register them anywhere. So I found that a couple of like white supremacist sites have been registered on there. People who just can't get any other domains. So the kind of websites that would have their domain taken off them by any registrar that does any form of regulation. Extremely relaxed and extremely outdated rules for suspension of malicious domains. It seems you can just register a .su domain and there's basically no regulation on this. There's no one looking at it. It has an extremely small usage rate. So as a result, no one's really looking at the domain and no one's really regulating it. So you can register dodgy websites. I'm not going to show you any here, but after a very short amount of browsing around, uh, I did various searches for .su websites having a look. An awful lot of them seem to be selling things that are illegal. Uh, an awful lot of them seem to be selling sort of dodgy sexual services. An awful lot of them seem to be just very bizarre websites that have a login page and nothing else. So I can only imagine what dodgy content is behind them. Um, if you want to do something illegal online, you go to the .su domain. An interesting thing here, of course, is that it seems to be... What's quite interesting here is that it's become a kind of capitalist wild west on the .su domain. Anyone who can't register anywhere else, anyone who just needs a domain for their shady business dealings, they can register a .su domain. And I think it's amazing that the most famous communist country in history continues to live on as a dodgy wild west illegal activity domain name. It's become a complete safe haven for cyber criminals who are looking for somewhere to uh, conduct operations where they're not going to get much scrutiny. The administrators have attempted to in some way tighten the rules but still from what I've seen and what I've had a look around there's very little 
uh, actual regulation going on. So an awful lot of websites on there are the websites of hacker groups. An awful lot of them are ones that are offering to sell personal information. If you register a domain in most countries and you're using that domain for legal purposes, you can contact the domain's register and they can take the website down. Uh, as has happened with many white supremacist websites and people who have had their domain revoked and piracy websites and things like that. If you're using a .su domain for your illicit and abusive website, you're very unlikely to be losing that URL. Unlike most registrars as well, they also seem to just not collect data on the people who register. Uh, they seem very happy to just basically take your money and give you a domain. And it's extremely cheap as well. Uh, so to register a basic domain, it costs 590 Russian rubles. At current exchange rate, that's about €9.54. So actually, it's a very cheap and affordable option. If you're looking for a dodgy domain name, uh, you can register a .su. Although sanctions at the moment might make it slightly hard to get that registered and transfer that money over. It's undeniable that the .su domain space is one of the dodgiest parts of the internet. Possibly the dodgiest part of the internet that you can access that's not through the Tor browser. The global domain name system is regulated by an organisation called ICANN, which I will, we will discuss in other videos. But ICANN have expressed their intention to terminate the .su domain and the various other online regulators and online standard setting organizations have tried to phase out the domain but it continues to just exist because the russian domain registry they just seem to have absolutely no intention of deregistering it they've just kept it going and while they ask for information from people who try and register domains they seem very happy to just basically give one to anyone uh, who's willing to pay it's having a lot of use in these small Russian breakaway states, which of course don't have their own proper top level domain. It's also got a lot of use amongst shady websites that have been deplatformed elsewhere. It's also used by an awful lot of piracy websites. At one point, the Pirate Bay was registered on a .su domain. So shady online criminals have absolutely flooded to the .su domain um, to send spam, to run dubious and sometimes just outright illegal services, uh, to uh, send spam and to steal money. If you get an email from an email address with a .su domain, you should probably just delete that immediately if it's not already flagged as spam. It's fascinating that the .su domain is being kept alive by this very anarcho-capitalist enterprise where people haven't been able to register elsewhere. I've had to leave everywhere where they've otherwise been deplatformed. It's also kept alive by a weird communist nostalgia as well. So these two groups of people are both using this domain for the most famous communist nation that has ever existed. So I've had a look to try and figure out the extent to which the domain is just used for cybercrime. Like I said, there are some legitimate and uh, non-cybercrime usage, but a majority of the usage seems to be that. So I had a look and I found that uh, someone who works for one of the Russian internet watchdogs uh, found that a majority of cyber criminals across the whole former USSR all seem to kind of use this .su domain. The .su domain as well has also had a lot of usage for controlling botnets, controlling the networks of hijacked computers and using it to empty bank accounts just for general online hacking purposes. If you need a shady domain that's very unlikely to be suspended no matter what you do on it, you probably should register a .su domain. If cyber criminals are using a regular domain name to control their botnets, generally as soon as those domain names are identified, they contact the register of those domains and then they're suspended pretty much immediately. Hackers using the .su domain can operate effectively with impunity for months and months at a time. An awful lot of these criminals are in effect operating just in broad daylight. The small number of legitimate domains that are registered with .su make it very hard to now wind up the .su domain. One possible proposal is to move the entire domain to, for example, su.ru. So just move it to be a subdomain of .ru. But that might not go down so well with an awful lot of people who've registered the domain who are not in Russia or in another former Soviet state. The SU domain has extremely outdated terms of service and the actual Russian laws that are regulating it are extremely weak. So as a result, it's basically just a wild west of the internet. It's become extremely notorious corner of the internet. So this remnant of the Soviet Union remains as a major cybersecurity threat in the 21st century and I find that very, very interesting. It's been well documented how the Russian government has a symbiotic relationship with an awful lot of Russian cyber criminals. I might get into this more in another video. And it makes me wonder if the lack of regulation on the .su domain is an intentional action by the Russian government to give these criminals somewhere where they can operate with effective impunity. While the issue isn't regulated, I imagine if the FSB wanted to bring a website down, they could do that extremely quickly. 
There's a lot of things on the .su domain which if I was to list them would get this video demonetized very quickly. If it's bad enough to not be allowed on other domain names, it's probably on the .su domain. So the domain continues to exist despite the demise of the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union has existed for over 30 years at this point. They kept the domain alive originally just with the idea that they'll have a kind of extended winding down of it while everything gets transitioned over. I imagine the reason for this is unlike all the other country code domains that have been withdrawn, .su is now many different countries and has widespread usage. All the other domains that have been revoked, either everyone on the domain transitioned over to a single new domain, everyone from DD went over to .de, and then .yu, the old domain for Yugoslavia, had probably very little usage, so as a result it was quite easy to just pass everyone over to the new domains, whereas .su has actually a fairly sizable usage. And the domain hasn't just been kept alive as well, it's also had new things added to it. Uh, the most basic one of this is that it got given full Cyrillic character support, including 37 non-standard Cyrillic characters that are used in kind of a low local and regional Russian languages. So this just kind of adds to the amount of domains that you can register. The fact that this domain allows registrations not only in the Latin alphabet but also in the Cyrillic alphabet and a kind of extended Cyrillic alphabet just means that this domain's just means that this domain can also be used for an also lot of punicode phishing. And for those not aware of what punicode phishing is, it's basically where you use a non-Latin letter inside of a Latin domain to make it look like it's a legitimate domain. So for example, apple.com, you could register apple.com with a Russian A rather than a Latin A. So you then could have Russian A PPLE as a domain and it would redirect to your website rather than the Apple one. But to anyone looking at that domain, um, it would just look like the standard apple.com website but actually it isn't. Browsers have been getting better at identifying this and now you'll see that they force uh, internationalized domain names, the ones with non-standard Latin characters, they break them up so now they make it clear that it's not the standard domain but still many people can be fooled by it. Browsers have got much better at this, they now generally flag it as a deceptive site ahead warning because it's pretty easy for the browser itself to identify if there's a random domain name that has like random Russian or Greek letters in, there's probably something wrong. One of the most famous illegal uses of the .su domain was the website exposed.su, which became quite prominent when it leaked a load of personal information that had been hacked from celebrity accounts. It's pretty much the only place on the internet where cybercrime sites can operate in the kind of online equivalent of broad daylight. Usually this kind of stuff is consigned to the dark web, but on the .su domain, it can just operate with effective impunity. Thanks for watching today's video everyone, I just thought I'd share this interesting thing that I found online. Uh, I hope to make a few more videos about this kind of stuff, so click that subscribe button, make sure you like the video, bye bye.